Good morning, good morning. Hello, everybody. While we're populating, I just want to show you that we've got 20, there's nine, we've got 20 volumes, there's number 12, 20 volumes, that's over 2,000 handwritten pages of our journal. That's just Camille and I and meeting with people locally. Uh, i got to tell you, and we got 2,000 pages to review, and all I did was get through page 45 last night in volume 1. And uh, on this page, we've got uh, uh, Joe Thibodeau and I having communion together. And, um, you know, uh, this is what it looks like. Every page is communion fire, you know. And um, I just, you know, I just... I look at this, and when I read those first 45 pages of Communion Fire, um, I'm going to move over to Russia here because we're going to pray for Russia this morning. Um, those first 45 pages, I mean, yeah, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whenever you have communion, it's the same Jesus. He's the same. He changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So every time you meet with him at his table, it's the same Jesus. He doesn't change. He loves. He smiles. You know, uh, he doesn't even have to say he forgives you because you already are. We walk in the light of his forgiveness when we have communion with him. Amen. Now, if you need to repent, it's the, you know, the, the goodness of God leads to repentance, not the hammer of God, okay? But, uh, you know, let's not lay again the foundation stone of repentance from dead works. Okay, let's move on. Praise God. Um, anyway, I just wanted to share that witness with you this morning. These are the 20 volumes that has only taken four years to fill every page. And, uh, you know, this is, this is, you're looking right now at number 20. So that's, we're going to be, when we finish this volume, it'll be 2,200 handwritten pages of communion fire experiences of encountering Jesus every day with Camille and I in the morning, and then once or twice a week with friends all over the Grand Strand. Praise God. Uh, I see, Ma good morning, Mary. Uh, Mary Mary is a journaler. You know, she journals with us. I would, I would love to see your journal someday, Mary. But we need to start, you know, sharing from these, you know. We need to understand it's the same Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There are times we've had very similar type things that the Lord shows us and speaks to us about in communion. Yes, he's a God. He, he's not hiding. All right, let's pray for Russia. I got word from a brother whose computer was hacked from Russia. Uh, he's, a, he's a world traveler. Um, and uh, we say, David, God bless you. It's so good to see you, my dear friend. But we're going to go pray for Russia this morning in China. And as we do, see, it's perfect for the hand. We get China, India, and Russia. All right, Lord, we lay hands on China, Russia, India, especially Delhi, India. And we pray, Lord, ignite the fuse of communion fire. Cause there to be an explosion of communion fire over these three areas of the world. Lord, in the northern hemisphere, we just pray that you would pour out that mighty fire of your spirit, Lord God, into the hearts and minds, the hands, the feet, the thoughts, the life, and uh, the dialogue, the discussion, the speech, Lord God, that, that would be a speech that's only heard in heaven and for those on earth who know you. Let the speech of God fill the whole earth. Hallelujah. Lord, let your visions fill the whole earth so that we're never hungry again. Jesus, you said you are the bread of life and you poured out your blood that we might live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we pray for your outpouring of communion fire on Russia. China, and on India this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So I thought I'd kick into it a little bit early this morning just because I'm so excited. I'm so excited. 
This is um, a quick reading. Um, we're, we're going from uh, Dr. Italy. Uh, you can Google Dr. Italy and it will take you to, or you can find uh, crossroadsinitiative.com and order the book. You know, when the church was young, we're, Dr. Marcellino D'Ambrosio gives us a tour of the early church and he takes us from house to house and introduces us to, you know, from one uh, saint or leader in the early church to another. And, and as we meet these people, we get to know them and see what they dealt with, what the kinds of things, you know, what we deal with today in our day is no, is not dissimilar to what they dealt with in the early day. Listen to this. Uh, we're finishing up on, um, uh, on dear brother Ignatius today. Uh, Jesus Christ of David, uh, th th it says, Jesus uh, is fully man, that his body was not a mirage, an appearance or a phantasm. Uh, we believe Ignatius said the following. Now, before I say that, let me say that one of the things he had to fight in his day was that, you know, people who didn't grow up in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uh, who saw Jesus and talked to people who knew Jesus or healed by Jesus or delivered by Jesus or heard him speak or multiply the, the loaves or, you know, speak to them about being the uh, bread of life. Um, they said, oh, you're just making all this up. Jesus is really just a ghost. He's just a phantasm. Ignatius said, no, he's for real. Jesus is real. That's why we have communion. Jesus is real. Now listen to this. He says, uh, Ignatius says, Jesus Christ of David's lineage of Mary, who was really born and ate and drank, was really persecuted under Pontius Pilate, was really crucified and died in the sight of heaven and earth and the underworld. He was really raised from the dead. Praise God. Hallelujah. For his father raised him just as his father will raise us who believe in him. That's the promise of communion in John 6. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life and I will raise them up in the last days, Jesus says. He says, so... You know, eat my flesh and drink my blood, he says. And it says many turned away because they said, oh, he's just the son of Mary and Joseph. Well, they didn't even say that. He's the son of Joseph and, and his mother. You know, they didn't get it, did they? No. Uh -uh. All right. In this statement, we can see that the kernel of both the Nicene and the Apostles' Creed, which are nothing more than expressions of this ancient apostolic tradition, sometimes called the rule of faith. And so when we have communion fire... We sometimes share or declare the Apostles' Creed. So we had these little cards made up. It's the only printed material that we really distribute are these little cards so that you can uh, have communion and then declare the creed with us. Okay. All right. Now listen to this. Okay. Ignatius says they hold aloof. Um, well, let me, let me just say this. The very same people who were squeamish about the Incarnation were also uneasy about the Eucharist. Sound familiar? At Capernaum, John 6, Jesus speaking to them about being the bread of life, and that if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I am in you and you are in me. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have eternal life and I'll raise you up on the last day. And um, they all turned away. Well, guess what? They're still turning away today, aren't they, when they hear that. You know, we dine with the Lord and dine upon him. Um, of course, his flesh is not like the flesh of men, but it is uh, the flesh of men, but it's divine because when he was raised up, that flesh was glorified. So uh, we dine upon divinity and we divine upon humanity. The, the, the dining is something that's an experience of faith. It takes a miracle. It says in John 6, he also says the work of God is to believe, to, to believe. It doesn't say the work of God is to read every book in the Bible, to memorize all the scriptures, the Torah. You know, it's not, it, it, it's not to pray at least eight hours a day. It's not, uh, you know, uh, pray always is a way of life. It's a way of life. Anyway, so Ignatius says, um, uneasy about the Eucharist for, for the very same reason. Ignatius says they hold aloof from the Eucharist. That's another word that the Roman Catholics use for the Holy Communion or for communion or the Lord's Supper. Or, uh, you know, uh, the, in the Kirbana, it's, uh, they have a divine liturgy in the Orthodox Church. It's all the same thing, communion, communion, okay? So Ignatius says they hold aloof the communion 
and from services of prayers because they refuse to admit that the Eucharist is the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered for our sins, who in his goodness the Father raised. All right. Ignatius is not a sophisticated theologian seeking to explain how Jesus could be God and man at the same time. His role is to witness and to defend the true apostleship of faith about Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Right? Oh, you want to see this, do you? I see I'm not making it up. That's right from Marcellino's book. Get a copy. This is page uh, 25, okay? Ignatius in the body and blood. And there's uh, the letter of Ignatian to the Ephesians. All right. Now, uh, remember we said yesterday he got seven letters out, you know, before he was martyred. But, um, okay, so, um, the saint, okay, let's see, uh, true God, true man, the one who is the object of his love, the one for whom he is about to die. And so he does with vehemence. The same is true for the Eucharist. Ignatius does not explain how it could maintain the appearance of bread and wine and still become the body and blood of Christ. He simply asserts emphatically that just as the historical body of Jesus is no more a phantasm, neither is the Eucharist body of Christ some empty symbol God takes on flesh and uh, some empty symbol. God takes on flesh and blood. And that flesh and blood is truly given to us in the Eucharist, in the communion which he calls the medicine of immortality and the antidote for which, uh, uh, the antidote which wards off death but yields continuous life in union with Jesus Christ. All right? Praise God. Great writing there, Dr. Italy. Thank you so much. Hello, Camusol. It's good to see you, dear brother. Hallelujah. We prayed for Russia, China, and India today, Camus. Good to see you. Hi, Thomas Kamioka. Uh, Bonnie Jean, good morning. Good morning, Thomas. Great to see all of you. Praise God. And David, if you catch this, uh, special blessings to you, my brother. All right, let's have communion, folks. If you're ready, grab your piece of bread. If not, just have communion with us. Lord, we ask you to bless this bread to be your body. We do this to remember you, the body of Christ broken for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, we ask you to bless this wine to be your blood. We do this to remember you, the blood of Jesus shed for you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Uh, in the bread, I saw two bridges going over a river. It's a river I'm familiar with up in Maryland. And, um, and two bridges going across. One was broken down, and the other one was a good, strong bridge. But they both looked okay. And then when I, uh, Jesus said, I am one of the bridges. I'm the bridge that works. When you're trying to get from this life to eternal life, Jesus is the bridge over troubled waters, Okay. Trust in Jesus. The work of God is to believe. Just believe Jesus. Say, Jesus, I believe. And let him take it from there. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Communion. Praise God. Communion means communication. Jesus communicates with us every time we have communion. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear. And the only way that miracle happens is if you believe. Close your eyes to this world and look for the world to come. Close your ears to this world and listen for the voice of the Lord. However, he might speak to you. He might speak to you through the birds of the air. He might speak to you just in your heart. He might show you a sign or give you a scripture reference. But there's many ways the Lord speaks to us, okay? In the wine, he said, he said, watch. The wine gives you discernment about which bridge is me and which bridge is false. The true bridge of Jesus, when we have the wine, lights up. Ooh, did you get that? The bridge, when we have the blood of Jesus, when we drink in the life that Jesus gives us, it's not, not a problem for his beloved to see which bridge is his. Because when we see his bridge, it's all lit up. And I mean Christmas lights. I mean lit up. A celebration bridge is what it is because you're going over from uh, death to life, from unforgiveness to totally forgiven, from 
uh, diseased uh, to being healed, from being blind to seeing, from deaf to hearing, from this life to the life to come. Communion brings us into a deeper relationship with the Lord. Amen. Bless you, Camus. Uh, Mary Mar says, third day in a row I saw doves flying up and covering the world. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He's sending his angels. He's sending his spirit. They're covering the world. Amen. You watch and see if we don't begin to see some magnificent marks of what uh, of what Mary shared with us this morning. Amen. God bless you all. The Lord's peace be with you. Make his face to shine upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. We're coming up to Jerome tomorrow. We're going to start meeting Jerome. Thanks, Dr. Italy, for your great work. God bless you all. Ciao, baby.